Welcome to the Webster World Report, a program linking Webster University's global system while the world is in crisis. Here's our host, Rick Rockwell. This is the December 11th, 2020 edition of the Webster World Report, our last program for a very challenging year. This time, exploring issues of racial equity with Webster University's Alumni Association President and Education in China, We'll visit with Webster's programs there and get the view from Beijing. But first, let's hear from newscaster Tiara Gray. The university's webinar series on race and equity issues, Webster Speaks, featured a panel of chief diversity officers and experts in early December. Clinton Normore is the vice president for diversity and inclusion at A.T. Still University in Arizona. He was one of the featured panelists. It's important for uh, all of us to have opportunity and access, uh, and that is uh, uh, paramount to success. Uh, and we can't get that if there are no allies. The allies don't have to always look like us. You know, I want to make sure that that's real clear as well. We are talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. The entire Webster Speak series can be found on the university's YouTube channel. The next program will be on Wednesday, December 16th, and will feature an expanded panel of guests from previous programs looking at 2020 and the year ahead. That program will again feature Carol Daniel of KMOX Radio, Donald Suggs, the publisher of the St. Louis American, and Michael McMillan, president of the St. Louis Urban League. Registration information for this series can be found on the university's website. The Webster University Task Force on Transition and Adaptability issued a note to the community in early December, reinforcing that the current academic year will apply to the spring semester. The spring semester includes a spring break in March. Webster's fall break was eliminated this year due to the coronavirus pandemic. Overall, the Webster system worldwide has reported about 145 cases of COVID-19 among students, staff, and faculty since the beginning of the pandemic. That includes 11 residential students in Webster Groves and 20 faculty and staff members at the main campus since August. Webster's campuses in the U.S. and Thailand continue to offer some in-person and hybrid classes. All other campuses have converted to strictly online education at this time. The English department at Webster University sponsored a session highlighting several African-American poets this fall. One of the poets who offered a reading during the session was Ladan Osman, a Somali-American poet. This is the sea fell on my house. I was sweeping and counting my cups and rinsing my toothbrush and bracing my hinges when the sea fell on my house. The sea fell on my house when I'd braced for a straight line wind. The sea fell on my house and I couldn't tell if it jumped on me or me and it, but I was filled with the minerals and matter every beast and root on earth contained. The session was part of the English department's ongoing writer series, a series that has been held continuously since the 1980s. This reading and discussion is available on the English Department's YouTube channel. Webster University's Chancellor and President hosted a virtual holiday gathering for university employees in early December. About 170 people attended the event using the online video platform Zoom. Chancellor Beth Strobel wished the community well and thanked all for their service during the pandemic. I think what we have done in the last hour gives us a very positive way to think about what it can be and how we can characterize 2020 for Webster. And the word that comes to mind is community. Um, So I ask you to join me in lifting a glass to Webster students, to Webster faculty and staff, to Webster. Cheers. The university will host a virtual December toast to its new graduates online later today. More information about that event and its YouTube replay can be found on the university's website. For the Webster World Report, I'm Tiara Gray.
Thanks, Tierra. This week, a shout out to our listeners in Clayton, Missouri. Our listeners in that suburb are only surpassed by our listening base in San Antonio, Texas, and of course, St. Louis, Missouri. So thanks to our listeners in Clayton and elsewhere across the United States and around the globe. And now we turn to one of the key issues of 2020. Discussions of equity and race rocked the world this year. These were the topics in our conversation with Alexandria McEwen, the president of Webster University's Alumni Association. McEwen holds three degrees from Webster, and she's a software engineer for AT&T. Here's the second part of our discussion, conducted earlier this year via Cisco WebEx from St. Louis. McEwen talked to us about being the only black woman in her cybersecurity and computer classes. Um, so undergrad, there were two females. Um, both of us started off in 06, and um, at the end, it was just her and I, and I was the only black female um, all four years. So even with computer science undergrad and, yeah, on um, with my cybersecurity part as well, I was the only black female. So I'm, you know, I'm used to it. But also I look at that as a way for me to try to encourage the younger girls that I'm around. Um, I'm a Girl Scout troop leader. I work with the kids at church. In the eyes of everyone, I have a lot of kids because all of them love me. So um, my goal is to encourage them, um, especially the young black girls to be, you know, that STEM is cool. Uh, We've done a number of robotics competitions and science projects and I have robotics kits here at my house, so yeah. We, um, my goal is to encourage them that math and science is amazing. Engineering is amazing. Um, and I will continue to do that. So, so what is the reaction when you tell people who don't, who have maybe a stereotype about what your role is when you get into that space? How do you have that Uh, conversation? I just let them know I've always loved numbers, you know, so I, I went to a private school. And so it was only five black kids out of everybody. So I was really okay with it. And so I kind of knew that would be my journey because you don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of young girls in general that love math and science. So I was the one in all the math competitions in middle school and high school. I, I did the St. Jude's math problems. So it's not a hard conversation for me personally because I'm very honest and real about it. Um, that has been my journey. Um, I have to be 10 times as good when it comes to my skill level. Um, even with trying to move up at work, you know, I have to make sure I'm marketable. So just constantly trying to enhance my technical skills, uh, which was another reason I went ahead and got my master's in cybersecurity. Um, I literally was just taking classes just to be up to date with everything that's going on. And the advisor called me and she was like, well, Alex, you only need two more and you can have your master's in cybersecurity. And I was like, oh, okay. So I wasn't even paying attention to, you know, what I was doing. Um, But at times it does get discouraging. I'm not going to lie about that. So I try to charge myself and other black female engineers that I know that it's our job to make sure the next generation doesn't, you know, that they're not alone, that they don't have to go through this, that they can see us working in these positions and that we can help guide them along the way. So when they get to college, they know what courses to take. They know who to talk to for internships, for co-ops, and um, we can help um, guide them and help them navigate through that. Isn't that mentally wearing on you? Do you feel like you have to be on all the time? Um, yes, all the time. Um, and I am, I'm already a perfectionist. So um, trying to make sure I am, my skill level is always up, that I don't mess up. Um, it is draining. It's exhausting. Um, I think some people feel like, you know, well, no, it's just a normal day. No, for me, I have to think about, you know, other things. Um, I go outside, you know, I have to be careful not to look, you know, not to look suspicious, not to look like I'm doing anything, but also I still have to be on because I'm representing every organization I'm in, right? Um, I am always, 
I always say I'm always representing my job, my the organizations I volunteer with, my church, my family. So I have to pay attention to the things I say, the things I do. Well, I just have to send you some congratulations. You always come off as so cool and level-headed. Who would know that all this pressure is happening to you? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I try not to let it. Um, I try not to let it out. But those close to me, they know um, because even and even with the mental health, the anxiety that comes with things like that, just even at work, just um, trying to make sure they know that I have the skill level as well. I can do this just as well as so and so, if not better. Um, I'm qualified for this position, just like so-and-so I've been here longer. Um, and not and necessarily that's not always the case. Um, but if I don't get a certain position on a project or something, I have to figure out another way to stand out. So um, always trying to think of creative ways to stand out, whether it's being a part of our culture committee at work um, and having different events and you know bringing us together for fellowship or being the person that's giving the cybersecurity um, social engineering um, talks and stuff, you know, the workshops. So just trying to find other ways to stay relevant, um, be creative about it. And so do that at work and outside of work as well. Though, so. Well, thank you so much. Our guest today on the Webster World Report, Alexandria McEwen, the president of Webster University's Alumni Association, Join us via Cisco WebEx from St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. We'll be back with more from the Webster World Report and views from Beijing in a moment. When you visit Webster Athens, one word comes to mind. Value. Study in Athens, Greece and get an unparalleled educational experience through various innovative undergraduate, graduate, and study abroad programs. The campus at Webster Athens lies right below the Acropolis at the confluence of Europe, Asia, and Africa. To join our learning community, email athensadmissions at webster.edu or visit www.webster.edu.gr. Assalamu alaikum. Hello from Webster University in Tashkent. Our campus is the first and premier American university in Uzbekistan. In this dynamic higher education market, we are constantly on the lookout for new faculty and staff. If you are ready to embark on an adventure in a safe, affordable, modern country with a rich history and exciting future, reach out with an email. Contact us at this email address, oozcareers at webster.edu. Welcome back to the Webster World Report. Candace Zhao is Webster's site representative in Beijing, working with Webster's Director for Operations in China and others in Shanghai to support Webster's programs for business students in China, study abroad options for Webster students and Chinese students studying in the U.S. She spoke to us via Zoom from Beijing. Uh, mostly I'll take care of things that happening here in Beijing or in the broader Beijing region. So for example, Beijing is the place where uh, any student from Webster system and by system, I mean Webster home campus or Webster international campus students are uh, coming here in China to have their semester in China. Uh, they will come to Beijing, this city where I base, uh, because here we have a university partner, namely the Beijing Cultural and Language University, who provide extensive and all level Chinese classes and cultural experience. Uh, so that's this is the place where all the Webster students come. And on top of that, we also have um, a two plus two Two degree program with the same university partner, so which means their student can come to Webster and finish their bachelor degree, um, both uh, finish with a bachelor degree, both a Webster one and also a Beijing Culture and Language University one. 
And on top of that, Beijing is the capital of China, so which means there are also a lot of government relationship work on, and this is also the educational center, uh, if I shall say. So we have a lot of international school and public school with international curriculum. Um, so within the broader Beijing region, there are a lot of um, prospective Chinese students and their parents looking for um, a decent university, a Amer decent American university um, experience, which Webster can offer. So, and I also do recruiting uh, for home campus, uh, which is happening within this region. So I'm wondering, as you do your recruitment there in Beijing and throughout the country, what do you say to a Chinese student who wants to study with Webster University? Why is their interest in working with us? I would think uh, one of our biggest strengths, Webster on offers, oh, actually two <laughs> strengths that I advocate all the time. Uh, for one is definitely our liberal art um, education philosophy or system. Um, I myself is a Chinese national and I grew up basically uh, follow the public um, Chinese education system. And because we are a great a grand nation with a big population, as I think everyone know. Uh, most of the class size that I've experienced are about 50 to 60 students per class. And um, when it goes to Chinese university level, that extend to sometimes 200, 300 students in one lecture hall with one professor. Well, on the other hand, I myself have um, the opportunity and also the luxury, if you ask me, to work for Webster. And I'm currently actually taking my Master of Education with Webster system as a, uh, as a staff. So which I understand that Webster is a very class, small class size, it's a very small class size. And we have a student, a faculty student ratio to, of one to nine, maybe up to 10. The normal class size is maybe 10 students with one professor. So that's like a huge, huge difference. And in my perspective, a huge, huge uh, strength for many Chinese students that they can actually have much more engagement, interaction, um, and even just opportunity to, 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 um, to push themselves a little bit further because they have to talk with the professor and teammates much more than in a 200 people classroom. So I would say that's the first and the biggest advantage Webster holds um, to the prospect of Chinese students. Uh, the other one I shall say is our international uh, system, our international campuses. Uh, many students and their family, they, they favor a U US higher education degree because they believe in the system. Um, but they also have other, um, I wouldn't say concern, just other desires in life, if I should say. I mean, especially when it comes to undergrad students, they are thinking about um, one of the arguably biggest decisions they shall make for their life, where to spend the next four years. And in that sense, I think Webster has a unique strength with our global campuses, so which means they do not necessarily have to stay in the United States for four years. They can just happily stay in the United States at our home campus for a year or two, and then spend the next year at Geneva or Austria or the Netherlands, or I shall say my favorite campus, I walk in uh, at Thailand, you know? So it's up to them to really enjoy the opportunity to be a true, um, global citizen as the Webster network can provide. I mean, on top of that, we are one of the best value campus, web best value colleges in the United States, um, but, uh, and with so many other strengths. But I would uh, personally say those are the two biggest strengths and advocacy um, when I took, talk to Chinese students and their parents. You've mentioned here the global network. And as we know, in the past month or so, the entire global network, including China, launched new websites. The U.S. has a new website. Tell us about your work in changing the website there in China. In China, especially within the mainland area, 
there is on um, a censorship or say a uh, web uh, website restriction there's a firewall uh, someone would say so which essentially makes it difficult for chinese website users to um lock in or get access to foreign or at least some foreign website uh, when the servers are based outside mainland china so in that sense uh, one of my recent duty during this pandemic is to establish web Search china website uh, within the local region with a more local server um, uh, many of our prospective students here in China mainland, uh, what we're trying to do is um, maybe arguably the best solution. And, and that being said, we've spent, I would say, almost six months uh, from request for proposal and all the way to develop the website. Uh, we are doing a bilingual website. And we're following um, the directions. Uh, whereas we also provide another local language of a uh, version on our Webster China website um, for the students to have a more familiar options when they go through the website. Well, congratulations, because we know that that is difficult and arduous work. So thanks for your service with this. You mentioned the pandemic. I, I wonder how you and others in the Webster China system are working through the pandemic. How are you coping? We are there, we're surviving. <laughs> uh, Rick, our um, China director, he's, he's super supportive and he's very optimistic. He's the one that usually say we will survive this. And um, I think um, what really encouraged me uh, on top of this very supportive teamwork we have is that actually many of um, the community here in China and also the government bodies are doing whatever we can during this pandemic time. For example, Education USA has already been able to organize two in-person events with a lot of public health um, protocol for, for sure, but um, two in-person education uh, fair for the past two months yeah, one in Beijing, one in Shanghai, and each one of them have more than 300, almost uh, 400 um, attendees. So we can see that the enthusiasm for Chinese students and their parents to, to, to get to know, at least to get to know better about American higher education is still there, it's not going down. And on top of an um, in-person event, which just recently, recently be possible, during this pandemic, um, since the beginning of this um, spring, uh, there's an, an, a local association, we namely call that American University China Association, uh, which both my colleague Nettie and I are quite heavily involved. As a community, um, as association, we've been able to organize over 30 webinars and online forums since this spring, since the pandemic outbreak, uh, outbreak. The webinars, the topic of the webinars are very diverse. Some are focusing on, uh, for example, what is a liberal arts college? Uh, some are telling differences of uh, a, a community college or institutional based, a research institute. Others are focusing on, for example, fine art colleges or pharmaceutical colleges. Uh, the other webinars may be more about uh, reassuring parents when their students are currently uh, studying in the United States, um, going through this pandemic, this challenging time. So we tried to touch upon a lot of topics throughout these 30, more than 30 webinars to really as a community establish more confidence um, to the general um, pros, uh, general audience and by audience, I mean students and their parents. And there's also another um, community uh, which I show, their name is China Institute of College Mission Counseling. So this is a community with a group of um, the admission counselors, college admission counselors. Uh, they've been also been able to organize a series of both in-person and online events uh, that me as a site representative and also and our other, other China colleagues has been able to attend. So um, I shall say it's very challenging because I've been looking at my work review this year. 
and I've only been able to conduct four school visits given the past year because most of the school are still um, not uh, ready enough to receive outsiders visit. They kind of practice their own quarantine, uh, which means their students and their faculty can come to school and then just stay there or with a very fixed routine back, uh, back to home and back to uh, school. So they're not, uh, most of the schools are not ready to receive outside visitors like us. Um, so usually, um, I think last year, for one fall semester, I probably visit two dozen schools, like in-person visits. This year, I've only been able to do four. So that's the challenging part, not able to actually see the student, not actually be able to you know, see their, their body language, their facial expressions. And um, that's challenging. I do miss that, um, not only with the students and also many of the colleagues in the industry, but um, this is a pandemic. This is a challenging time and it's still ongoing. And I think I'm, I'm quite happy we've been able to do a lot of things online thanks to the local community. Candace, I wonder if you have any message for the rest of the Webster system. Well, this is the thing that I I started to to say to myself and to my colleagues, to my family and friends since the outbreak of this pandemic, and that is, be patient and be faithful. Mm, that's it. And this is probably our new norm. I hate to say that, um, but nowadays when 80 or even 90 percent of the in-person activities have to shift to an online forum i just i hate it at first but i started to enjoy it at the same time which means you don't have to be bound by the location or by logistic by travel budget you just get used to talk to your friend or a colleague um via a Zoom or via a call, why this all this different kind of online communication platform. And um, many times as, as I have the recent opportunity or luxury to when you actually see the person um, that you've been talking to online, it becomes such a big surprise. And it, it is almost epiphany to me that we take many things for granted before this pandemic. And I think this might be a lesson for us all to really cherish what we used to have and now find a better way to cope with it during the pandemic and really value every time that we have the opportunity to actually see and shake hands and hug each other. Um, I do much, much, more hugging nowadays <laughs> before the pandemic is, because I think it, it gives me a reflection upon myself to really value the human connection. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our guest today on the Webster World Report, Candace Zhao, the Beijing site representative, joining us via Zoom from Beijing. Thank you so much. Thank you for having, having me, Rick. Thank you. Thanks for listening to our program. The Webster World Report will return with new editions in mid-January of 2021. We'd like to add your voices to our podcast. If you're a student, a staff member, or a member of the faculty, reach out to us. Send us a short audio clip from your cell phone or contact us via email to volunteer to be interviewed on the program. You can find us at covid19 at webster.edu. You can also send questions or comments to that email address about our world in crisis. That address again is COVID-19 at webster.edu. Also, check out the university's COVID-19 resource pages at webster.edu slash COVID-19. The Webster World Report is now available on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and of course, SoundCloud. You can also hear the program on your Alexa speaker via TuneIn. Also, our report is featured on KWRH-FM Radio 63119. That's 92.9 FM in Webster Groves, Missouri. Thanks for joining us this week. The Webster World Report is produced by students, staff, and faculty at Webster University. 
for announcer Jennifer Starkey, news reporter Tierra Gray, and associate producer Jennifer Gamich. I'm Rick Rockwell. Stay healthy and safe. The Webster World Report is produced by the Global Marketing and Communications Division of Webster University and through the facilities and copyright support of Webster's School of Communications. This program is copyright 2020.